Hi, everyone. I was given a privilege to uh, share a service lesson on how to create a sacrament talk. So let us first answer this question. Why do we need to give a sacrament talk? Why can't we just leave the task to our general authorities, to our bishopric or to our state president? Uh, president Russell M. Nelson shared this counsel that do whatever it takes to increase your spiritual capacity to receive personal revelation. So this is one of the recent revelation or counsels from President Nelson. And the process of sacrament talk preparation will give us an opportunity to receive personal revelation. Why is that so? Because in the process, we receive the light of Jesus Christ. And every time we receive the light of Jesus Christ, we need to share it with other people. And Sacrament Talk is an opportunity to share the light we receive to others. Furthermore, in Doctrine and Covenants, section 50, verse 22, it says, and I quote, Wherefore, he that preacheth and he that receiveth understand one another, and both are edified and rejoice together. So this is one of the reasons why it is very important for us to share the insights that we receive with our prayer and scripture study, the, the church has given us an opportunity uh, with the sacrament program. Now, let me share to you how you will prepare for your sacrament talk. So we will start with the content of your talk or the speech content. The content is your connection between you and the audience. The very reason why you were given the task to present or to deliver a talk is that the audience need to learn something. And we can use schema theory. Uh, schema theory is telling us that our prior knowledge and the prior knowledge of our congregation are very important. So we need to know what we know and we need to know what they already know uh, because we need to give new information later on. And as we do that, as we ponder about it, we need the scriptures, we pray about it, we discuss with other members as we um, converse with them, we tend to know what they know, and we tend to calibrate what they need to know. So that is one of the process, uh, part of the processes. Okay. Another application is what we call input hypothesis by Krashen. So input hypothesis says, I plus one. The I here is the schema or the information that we already have, you as a speaker and the, the knowledge of the audience or the congregation. And we need plus one and plus one is the new information. And the plus one here is very important because we need to provide or we need to really analyze and ponder about what they need to know. Because without the plus one, there will be no new learning. And what will help us to know what should we give with the plus one? Action and Covenant section 42 verse 14 will help us. Uh, it says, and I quote, and the, spirit shall give, and the Spirit shall be given unto you by the prayer of faith. And if you receive not the Spirit, you shall not teach. So when you go back to in analyzing the plus one, the Spirit will tell you what are the the scriptures that you will use, what are the counsels that you will share to the members of the church so that you can address the needs of the congregation. Okay. And as you pray about it, you will be able to organize your thoughts. You will be able to take down notes of the scriptures and counsels from the prophets. At the same time, you can also add your, the promptings that you receive from the Spirit, and that is personal revelation. So once you have all of those notes, you can now organize the main idea. Main idea is very important because this is the summary of the entire talk. So once you're able to summarize the entire talk, you will be able to organize it in such a way that it won't be confusing to you and at the same time to the congregation. Main idea is just one sentence. It is a succinct idea. So when we say succinct, it should be clear and concise. Because if you will give a rambling idea, you were just confusing the congregation. So your talk doesn't, won't have any structure. So how do we do this? So we can follow the main idea formula, which is topic plus claim plus the three key points. Okay, so for example, your topic is commandment. 
and based on your scripture study, prayer, fasting, you were able to come up with a claim. So you can say uh, commandment plus claim can secure our place in celestial kingdom as it serves as. So you have to provide three key points that will organize the, the body of your talk. So let us say the three key points would be intelligence, guide, and protection. So that is the application of the formula topic plus claim plus the three key points for your main idea. Now for the introduction, there are things that you have to provide. Number one is the attention getter, transitions, and the main idea. So main idea is the last sentence of the introduction. So for the attention getter, you can use you more, you can tell a story, personal experience, thought-provoking questions, startling statistics, or thought-provoking statements. So these are the strategies that you can use to get the attention of your uh, audience. The transitional sentences will help you to connect your attention getter and your main idea. Of course, you need to provide some developing sentence or present developing sentence that will lead you to presenting your main idea. So once you're done with the intro, then you can now organize the body of the content. Okay, so with the body of the content, since you have all the notes, you need to organize them in this way. Um, you have the main idea then provide key point number one, then the minor details for each key point. So you have key point one, two, and three. And you have this development out of the main idea. So if you can still remember, the main idea uh, is equivalent to topic plus claim plus the three key points. So let me give you an example. So this is my recent talk that I gave in our ward. So my, th my main idea is that God's commandments can secure our place in celestial kingdom as it serves as intelligence, guide, and protection. So the very first thing that I need to elaborate is the first key point, which is intelligence. So for my key point number one, commandments serve as intelligence. And then I provided um, minor details and I used Doctrine and Covenants section 130 for me to elaborate what do we mean by commandments serve as intelligence. For the second key point, Commandment serve as a guide. I use him number 303, keep the commandments in, in these. There is safety and in peace. So remember that this is just an outline. So when you do elaborate it during your talk, so you can give personal uh, or share personal experiences or stories. Okay. For the third key point, commandments serve as a protection. Why? So the minor details will explain why. So for example, President Thomas S. Monson has, has said, uh, commandments will help us to combat Satan's deception. And at the same time, commandments will protect us from harmful consequences of disobedience. So you can give specific examples, personal experiences that will help you to elaborate your key point number three. Okay. In elaborating the, the body of content, we can be guided by Grice maxims. So the first maxims is what we call maxims of quantity. So what does it mean? It means that you will just share the, in, the sufficient information for the content and do not include unnecessary information. So you have to avoid long stories, long anecdotes, because it will be just dragging. So you will just bore your uh, audience and you will compromise the, the organization or the structure of your speech. So make sure that you follow the maxims of quantity. Maxims of quality, make sure that you are using credible information. So for sacrament talks, credible information will come from the scriptures, counsels from the prophets, and promptings of the Spirit to you. So make sure that the content is uh, follows the maxims of quality. Okay. Next one is maxims of relation. So you have to be relevant. So which is why it, schema theory is very important. You have to analyze your own knowledge, the, your own prior knowledge and the prior knowledge of your audience so that you can be able to establish our maxims of relation. And last is maxims of manner. So meaning that your talk should be coherent, cohesive, and concise. Coherent in such a way you have the main idea, which is the very core of your talk, and then you're able to develop the, the main idea by providing the three 
key points with its with their uh, minor details and it should be concise as well so that you won't um, be dragging in your speech so how do we do this how how do we make sure that uh, we follow the maxims of manner specifically the the third one being concise in a seven minute talk okay you only have 30 seconds for the introduction and then you have two minutes per key point in its minor details and you have 30 seconds for the conclusion so that is your guide for a seven minute talk so that you won't be dragging now there are times if you are a concluding speaker you will be given 10 minute talk so in this way if you have 10 minute talk you can provide uh, you can use one minute for the introduction and then eight minutes for the three key points and minor details and the last minute for the conclusion so that uh is all for the body okay now for the conclusion what are the things that we need to do we need to restate the main idea. So why do we need to do this? Uh, our brain has the capacity to retain information, but it's only limited. So the, our brain is only limited to remember the first thing that we heard, the important thing that we heard at the very beginning and the uh, in, information that we heard at the latter part. So which is why as a speaker, you need to help your audience to remember your talk. So this is what we call primac primacy effect and regency effect. So in the introduction, you've mentioned your main idea. So which is why in the conclusion, you have to mention your or you restate your main idea as well. And then afterwards, you have to provide the implication. So what do we mean by implication? It answers the question, what's in it for the audience? You have to tell the audience or the congregation what benefit could they get once they apply the lessons that you've shared in your sacrament talk. And then the latter part of the conclusion is the recommendation or the call to action. What actions that you are recommending for the congregation to do so that they can gain wisdom out of the lessons or, and principles from your talk. So this is an example of a conclusion. So you restate the thesis statement. God's commandments can serve as intelligence, guide, and protection. And then implication, what benefit they could get. Commandments will secure our place in celestial kingdom. Recommendation, we are always encouraged to keep the commandments. And then you close it in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay. So out of all of the prayer, scripture, study, and preparation that you have, there will be intervention between you and the Holy Ghost. And that intervention will help you to avoid or overcome the fear of public speaking and that is what we call glossophobia so i know that there are a lot of members who are uh, very scared of providing or delivering a talk so always remember that the spirit will guide us and prayer will give us strength and as we all participate in creating and giving a sacrament talk all of us will receive light of christ and in conclusion in Doctrine and Covenants, section 50, that which is of God is light, and he that receiveth light and continueth in God receiveth more light. And then light groweth brighter and brighter until the perfect day. So I know, brothers and sisters, that if we share the light that we receive, all of us will be edified and all of us will be strengthened.